Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> and what a glorious morning it is. We're in the second of, I think, probably two of the warmest days in April in history. Thank you, global warming. Thank you, the jet stream. Even though at the moment it looks like it might be slowing down and about to reverse and we're just going to enter the global winter in Europe but uh, anyway it's a nice day today it's a Friday I've got three patients booked in this morning no I'm off this afternoon deck chairs are already out on the lawn knotted handkerchiefs will be created in preparation for my two weeks in Crete which is coming up and it's less than two months away now, I think. So. What can we talk about today? My uh, update on my receptionist office is uh, going well. We are, as I suspected, we are able to do the job with very much less work. Uh, probably half a dozen phone calls a day at, at the most, at the very most and uh, quite typically more to two or three and uh, what happened yesterday was uh, I had to do a day off babysitting so my nurse took the day off unpaid quite happily because it was the hottest day of the year so far and uh, And uh, I uh, took, switched the phone through to my phone and uh, took, fielded, I think, about three phone calls, a couple of emails, and I was working from home. The dentist working from home. We've got one, one grumpy patient who refused to have x-rays. Re refusing to have x-rays is a massive, massive red flag in my opinion. You have to really, really think about The trouble with uh, patients who refuse to have x-rays are they are, I would say, they're just marginally over the line of acceptable. You know, you can't sling someone out because they refuse to have an x-ray. It's, you know, they, they have their, they have a right to their opinion on whether or not they would like one. So the simple refusal to have an x-ray is not, in my, my uh, Opinion, sufficient grounds to exclude a patient from the practice but um, the reason this guy gave was that he was a scientist and he knew what x-rays did uh, and it's true he is a scientist he works at a very large local research and development company um, as do many of my patients and uh, and he did know the, you know about stochastic effect of x-rays and therefore he just wanted to keep them down um, which is fair enough but uh, he is he's one of these perennially grumpy sort of blokes who comes in and says you know I've come in I've come in 15 minutes late because it only takes you five minutes to check my teeth anyway doesn't it you know that sort of that sort of thing. and then uh, he asked, uh, we, we booked him in for a checkup and scale and polish, and then he said, no, I can't come that day. Can I come this other day? But the other day was not a day when the hygienist was in. So I emailed him back and said, no, we can't do it that day, but it would have to be a Tuesday if you want to see the hygienist. And then you don't hear anything. Because he's like, you know, what, <laughs> he doesn't like it when he doesn't get what he wants. And it just so happens that there isn't a demand for hygiene at the practice at the moment to justify a full-time hygienist. And so the patients who need the hygienist will have to come in on the days that she's in. So, and it always doesn't suit some people, doesn't it? Always say, oh, well, she's in on a Tuesday. And then some people always say, oh, that's the only day I work in London. You know, so then what do you do? So then I say, well, we can still do your hygiene, but it just won't be with, I'll do it, we just won't be with the hygienist. You can't say fairer than that, you can't do more than that. So, 
that's I think in dealing with complaints um, all you, you have to demonstrate that you're doing everything you possibly can it doesn't have to be enough uh, or, or adequate or solve the problem but all the patient has to be convinced of is that you personally are doing are doing everything you possibly can to solve the problem and then they really can't complain can they can't complain and you can't ask you to do more than you can physically do uh, so anyway <clears throat> talking of um, yeah and we had another another lady who refuses x-rays and she's a very very nice quiet reserved Japanese lady and just said uh, we need to do some x-rays and she said no I'd rather not have them done and um, she's uh, she falls into another you know the, the class of patients who don't know why they don't that why they <laughs> they don't know why they do things they do things because they feel like it <clears throat> she decided that she didn't want to have anything didn't want x-rays because and, I, and it's usually uh, a friend has told her that x-rays are a bad idea and, and therefore she trusts the advice of that friend over, over my advice. So, <clears throat> and, they, and she didn't know anything about the stochastic effect of x-rays or anything. All she knew was that uh, she, she didn't want x-rays with her checkup in the same way as uh, she didn't want cheese on her pasta, you know. No thank you, just no thank you. So, now, with her, the situation did arise where she needed an x-ray, she had toothache, and I said to her, because we, we have this on their, on their nose, it flashes up when you open their nose like a memo, and it says patient refuses x-rays, then, um, you know, which is, I think, again, that's justified because you need to know that straight away so that you don't make the mistake of just keep saying to her, should we get some x-rays done? Notice you, otherwise every time the thing, it also flashes up warning, patient has a, hasn't had x-rays for two years. And so it just stops us saying, oh, I see you haven't had x-rays for more than two years. Shall we get some x-rays done? And just, she's gonna get asked the same question every time. Unless we also flash up this other memo says patient always says no to x-rays. Well, because I was talking to her on the phone and this memo flashed up. It, it uh, alerted me, so, and I said to her, look, this, this problem that you're describing, this toothache that you're describing, that you want to come in and get fixed, I said, it almost certainly will require us to x-ray the tooth. I said, how do you feel about that? And much to my surprise, straight away, she said, oh yeah, that won't be a problem. Said, oh, <coughs> okay, okay, so, you know. <laughs> so your principled stand against the use of x-rays uh, didn't stand up all that long, did it? When, uh, you know, you needed one. And then the same way as uh, people's principled stand against the use of antibiotics tends to uh, suffer somewhat when they get some sort of infection that they would like to get rid of. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, the x-ray thing is more is more uh, understandable in a way because um, there they've got the principled stand against the sort of use of x-rays on a surveillance uh, on a you know on a surveillance basis. Oh, hang on, let me shut that. Whereas um, you know, we don't prescribe antibiotics, you know, generic, you know, just nearly every it's not like every two years we recommend you have a course of antibiotics so okay but uh, it's amazing how people object to stuff without really understanding without saying why you know without understanding what without having a reason without having sort of you know as a scientific rationalist I'm thinking well I, I know why I say say something you know I know why the sun comes up in the morning. I just don't believe. I don't just believe it does. <laughs> I can explain why it does. <laughs> so, so while we're on the subject of patients and their sort of the uh, idiosyncrasies, 
I had another uh, potential patient ring up yesterday. Uh, you know, how much do you charge for an implant? I need two implants. I need two implants. How much do you charge for an implant? I said about uh, 1400 for the implant. But then, but I said on top of that, you've got to add uh, about 600 for the rest of it, you know, the abutment and the crown. So, and they went through the absolute panoply, the absolute panoply of just complete rubbish that you always get. Like, first start, they started off, well, on your website it says from 1200, but you've just told me 1400. And I say, yes, that's right, that's the cheapest one we do is 1200. But typically, which is what most people want to know, they don't want to know. If, if the cheapest one's not appropriate to them, they don't want to know the price of the cheapest one because it's not appropriate. They want to know what, what the cost of their one is going to be. And typically it's about 1,400 quid. So, now you might say, well, why don't you just put 1,400 quid on the website? And, uh, you know, there is, there is an argument. You know, you could, it's just one of two ways of doing things. You could put, on your website, you could put, the typical cost for everything. In other words, our fillings are typically this. Our, our implants are cost typically this. However, obviously that figure would be higher. And even then it wouldn't be... Well, all that would happen is that the patient would then assume that in their case, that is, would be the cost. And it might not be. I mean, it could be more, or it could be less. The actual, the, the uh, from figure is lower and is accurate because it is, it is actually a, an accurate statement of the least that you would have to pay for that procedure, which is useful information. It's like, you know, it's like if you're expecting to get an implant for 400 quid, forget it, because our implants start at 1200. So, and also it's, uh, to a certain extent, and in this patient in particular, it opens up the dialogue. Because a patient where, where you say that, you know, you add on a crown and say that an implant supported crown is typically 2,000 quid, the patient will not ring and open up a dialogue. Whereas if you say implants from 1,200, then they will ring and they, they will, you will have a dialogue and they probably won't have it done. But at least you've had a chance to have a chat with them and find out what their problems were. Now this patient, you know, so fortunately, you know, Providing you've got the right language to deal with these sort of inquiries, then you can joust with the patient on equal uh, <laughs> on an equal playing field, level playing field, because they've got a number of uh, cuts and thrusts that they're going to, you know, they're going to try and undermine what you're saying and try and find, try and find. Uh, Difference. Sorry, this is one of the staff said that her password's not working; is expired. And one of the other staffs uh, written in and said that's uh, that's Derek's way of telling you you're fired. Well, which I think is very funny. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. So thanks very much. <laughs> yeah. So, so first of all, he starts off with yeah, but on your website it says they're 1,200. So I said no, okay, no, but I'm trying to tell you be helpful and tell you what typically they are, not what the cheapest one is. Okay, and but that is for two, is it? No, that's not for two. No, I didn't say it was for two. I said it was for one. That is for one. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, so, but by the time you've had a crown on, you say it's in 2000. I say, yeah, that's right. Very old fashioned fire engine going past there. So, uh, you know, and you get all this, oh, well, well, I don't know why you bother, why do you bother quoting for, why do you bother quoting for, for an implant? Because an implant's always going to need a crown on it, isn't it? I mean, it's always, there's no point just having an implant. This is, so now the, the patient's ramping it up, aren't they? They're, sort of, they're trying to get into the old, uh, you know, your, I, I know, don't, you know, don't try and pull the wool over my eyes, matey. You know, I know a bit about dentistry. 
Uh, so don't think I'm a complete and utter idiot, which by that point, and, and certainly by, by that remark, uh, you do. You know, I know, I know that every implant needs a crown on it, so you're trying to make it look a bit cheaper, aren't you, by not including the crown. Although, in fact, I had straight away, right at the very beginning, I said, you'd need to allow another 600 quid for a crown. So, I mean, at that point, what do you do? Do you, you know, do you get involved in some sort of row with the patient and say, look, an implant might, might support a crown, or it might put, support half a bridge, or it might support a denture? You know, that's why they're quoted separately, you numpty. So, if, so that you can work out, it's like a Meccano kit, you put the bits together, you decide how much the project costs by adding up the pieces. But no, you don't, you know. So, what someone more skilled than me would have done, would have, would have just literally asked questions. Like, you know, what? how do you know you need two implants? What's the... Uh, Know, what, what's this, tell me a bit more about your situation and I might be able to help you a bit more you know I might be able to uh, tell you to give you a, a bit more assistance but no but basically by then you know he'd succeeded in in annoying me by by first of all I mean you know <laughs> you don't ring up you don't ring up Michael Dell do you and ask him how much a Dell computer is you just you know, and then you don't start arguing with him over his price list. So, and he's obviously on just on the ring around, isn't he? He's, he's decided himself he needs two implants. Or he's been told he perhaps he needs two implants from a dentist in London, so he's trying to get them a bit cheaper. And he's just ringing around saying, how much are your implants, how much are your implants, how much are your implants? And he'd got a clear... Um, he got a clear answer from us, but it wasn't the answer that he wanted. He wanted to hear about wanted to hear about 800 quid or something, and so uh, and so he just spent the sort of the second half of the phone call being being persnickety about everything. Just a silly boy. So anyway, that was it. So and that was it. You know, can I help you? Is there anything else I can help you with? No, thank you. Goodbye. Uh, it's a shame. I could have, you know, he's a poten obviously a potentially an implant patient, but an implant patient in the way that, you know, that, you remember we were talking about that other patient the other day of a, of a dentist who came in for a felling and then ended up needing a crown, and they weren't, you know, they they found themselves in the crown buying business when they did not expect themselves to be in the crown buying business anytime soon. And this guy's found himself in the implant buying business at a time when his finances really do not per permit him to be a, uh, a very active implant buyer. So, uh, but you know, I mean, you know, you have to be nice to everyone. So, fair enough. He's going to find his own solution, isn't he? In life, he'll find his path. Um, implants as they are done in this country are, are just still too uh, over-regulated to uh, ever be as cheap as they could be. I mean, they should be. Um, an implant, doing an implant should be as cheap as um, doing a crown. Or less. Should be, should be as easy as doing an MOD. Filling, really. Anyway, that's about it really. That's that's some of the, the vagaries of patients, you know. Some of the ways that then that's to be honest with you, you know, having had a ten year break from the profession from about eighty four to two thousand and four. Sorry, from uh, from two thousand and four to two thousand and fourteen. Um I've gotta say the patients ruin it. They really do. The, the, the problem that I've got with working as a dentist is entirely related to patients who are overly aggressive, argumentative and just generally wrong 
uh, making assumptions about things that, uh, that you know that are incorrect assumptions and basing uh, decisions on false premises, unreliable evidence, hearsay, belief, suspicion, and gossip, and 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 uh, just the general the time it takes and the effort it takes to identify, eliminate, you know, uh, ident identify and sort of categorize and eliminate the, the total bullshit that comes in through the door sometimes. It's just so exhausting. All right, still, I'm not totally exhausted yet. So I have got a bunch of lovely patients, which we've developed by chucking out all the loonies. So have a lovely Friday. I'm going to have a lovely Friday. Hope you did. You do. You did. <laughs> and a nice weekend. And I'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye.